What is going on today, guys? Welcome back to the episode of Dubbing your source for the music and music production news. We've got some interesting stories for you today. FL Studio is canceled, apparently. We've also got a new hardware sampler from Roland, as well as a new plugin from Isotope. In our first story, Isotope has released a completely unique idea for a plugin. Wow. It's a saturator? Huh? Dynamic intelligent saturator okay <laughs> okay all right let's check it out okay so it's called plasma and it's supposed to supercharge your sound you know just like any saturator would what makes this one different though is it's dynamic meaning it does not apply the saturation linearly they don't explain exactly what they mean by that but that is the explanation i feel like best suits what they are saying it's got a 10 day free trial it sounds pretty good but you know maybe they just picked out good demos hard to say user interface is pretty pretty sleek i do like it they say it's capable of just gently warming up your sound as well as cranking it into overdrive comes with target profiles and character settings obviously allowing you to set it really quickly and obviously you can adjust the frequency handles and there's different channel modes so mid and side left and right comes with 49 presets let's hear how it sounds Yeah, sounds like saturation. Let's check out one of the masters here, the hip hop master. You know it's a fire rap song when they rap about going beast mode. This one's a little more subtle for sure. Weirdly, they uh, don't have a lot of information on it. That is all the information they have here. It is only $49 though, so on the plus side. I'm, I'm actually surprised they're not trying to charge more than that. I mean, not that it's insanely amazing, but I can't imagine how many more ideas they have left. I feel like they're really scraping the barrel with this one. In our next story, we have an update to one of our previous videos where we talked about the Kendrick Lamar Super Bowl controversy. Wow, shocking. I can't believe he's the one performing. For some reason, people were upset that it wasn't Lil Wayne that was performing because it was in New Orleans. And it looks like Lil Wayne finally figured out what was going on because we got a little interview clip from him here. I'm not even sure he knows where he is right now. That hurt. Hurt a lot. You know what I'm talking about? It hurt a whole lot. Um, I blame myself for not being mentally prepared for a letdown. I just, I'm not, I don't get why he thought he was gonna, like, I, did he even think that he was gonna be performing at the Super Bowl, possibly? Like, I feel like people put this expectation on him or something. I don't know. I don't understand. I really don't get this. Like, maybe, maybe he found out that people are upset and he's like, oh, was I supposed to be performing? <laughs> Putting myself in that position like somebody told me that was my position. So I blame myself for that. But... I thought that was nothing, you know, I thought that was nothing better than that, that, that spot and that stage and that. All right, just, just beg him for it already. Kendrick, please let me open for you. Platform, my city. And, um, so I heard, I heard a whole lot. Um, but. I mean, I'm not even trying to ride for Kendrick that hard, even though I am a Kendrick fan. Like Lil Wayne's performances and his songs in the past 10 years, they're just not, not the greatest, you know? Y'all. Y'all are fucking amazing. It made me feel like shit not getting this, this opportunity. I don't know if he understands this, but a lot of the people that are supporting this and being like, why didn't Lil Wayne get it? They just don't like Kendrick. They just don't like Kendrick. And they're just, they're they're probably Drake fans. I feel like they're probably Drake fans or, they're, or they don't like Kendrick. That's probably the main reason they don't like Kendrick. And they feel like supporting this cause will hurt Kendrick. And when I felt like shit, you guys reminded me that I ain't shit without y'all. And, and like I said, it broke and I'm just trying to put me back together. But my God, have you all helped me. In our next story, we have a new sampler from Roland. And this is really a sampler you can lose yourself in. Sorry, sorry. I mean, this is a, really a sampler that you can lose because it's it's small. It's pretty, it's pretty small. Ro roll the clip. There's no clip. Shit. So as you can see, it's pretty compact here. Some tiny little keys. So, you know, if you were a giant or if you're tall, this may not work for you unless you want to hit multiple buttons at once. And which if that's the case, you could actually maybe be even faster with it than a normal sized person. I don't mean to offend you by calling other people normal. Sorry, I'm a freak too. One thing that seems good about this is it has granular sampling in it. So it's got a built-in microphone. You can chop samples. You can resample internal audio to create new sounds and loops. You can trigger the sample chromatically and polyphonically. There's dedicated 
dedicated filter and envelopes for each sample. There's a sample tool software that you can use to import and export sounds. There are granular sound parameters, 64 step sequencer. There are 20 effect sounds, audio connectivity, MIDI, sync IO and IRA link. Features a USB-C audio slash MIDI interface for plug and play. And the lithium battery works for up to three hours. Hi, Dustin from Roland here to show you the IRA Compact P6 Creative Sampler, a small but mighty powerhouse of sampling and sound design with a remarkable range of capabilities. The P6 is the latest addition to the IRA Compact line. Powerful, fun, affordable, and why are the demos for these products always so terrible? Like, I'm not even trying to be mean here, but this is not good. There had to be, I, I can, I'm not even saying this guy's bad. I'm just saying the thing he's playing right now is not great. And there had to have been something he himself has made that is better than this. One thing I had heard is there's a limitation to the sampling. I think it's like 5.9 seconds, I'm guessing per sample. And that's in mono. And then it's half as long uh, if it's stereo. So it depends on the fidelity you're playing it in here. Say so that's not great, but I mean, it depends what you're gonna use it for, I guess. I'm not sure why it's so short. So if you want one, you can get one for $219.99. Pretty affordable. That's uh, obviously the reason why it seems to be lacking a little bit in features, but hey, for $219, that's not bad. Okay, this appears to be interesting. We got another new plugin. Wow, this one is so different. It's a Fiesta. Well, wrong, wrong again, Weaver. Oh, can you ever stop being wrong? Why don't you do a little research? Apparently, split S is not a de -esser. So what is it essentially? From what I could tell, it splits the S sounds, ache or sibilance, away from the rest of the vocals and you can adjust them individually. It's a de with a few extra steps. Is it great though? I don't know. $49. Okay, this is funny here. Producers and engineers alike commonly find themselves spending long hours manually editing these problematic sounds. Yeah, if you're a fucking idiot, if you don't wanna just, you know, use a de if you wanna just waste your time. I know there are some people that do that but let's be honest so i think first thing to try is to use a de -esser. then if you need any manual adjustments or if something doesn't work then go in and do something manually by hand that's just my opinion though i know there's some people who want to spend hours de every vocal with volume automations hey more power to you man more power to you i would like to spend time with my family though so they claim the signal is left intact with no volume change so there's no compression no eq no crossover apparently they have reviews by andrew sheps somehow it seems like every grammy award-winning mix is reviewing every product don't know what that's about there is a free trial for 10 days and let's check out the video because i'm really curious how this is going to sound or solo one or the other at will it is really the plug-in equivalent of getting into the audio track cutting the sibilance by hand and lowering its gain there's gonna be some people that love this plugin, but also at the same time, they're gonna be like, yeah, but you didn't do it by hand. That was a hand master there. Let me know what you guys are thinking of that in the chat. Let me know what you guys are thinking of that down in the comments. I've been streaming too much lately. What's up, chat? W's in the chat. Chat. In our next story, we're gonna talk about the possible whoopsie the FL Studio has made. I'll let you guys be the judge of it. Is it a whoopsie? Are they canceled? Is it funny? You may have seen me dive into this in my last live stream, but I'm gonna do some quick coverage of it here for those of you that don't wanna sit through all of that. So some absolute brain rot moron named Eglo decided to tweet out the FL Studio 24 crack along with instructions on how to get it. Smart stuff. And the FL Studio Twitter page responded with the most ominous shit imaginable. If I was this guy, I'd be terrified for my life. And it seems like he was because he deleted this tweet and basically every other tweet and I think he privated his account or deleted it for a while or something, I don't know. And they made it look like FL Studio actually murdered this man. Can you imagine going on your main page and tweeting out FL Studio 24 crack? This got 1.2 million impressions. At least make a burner account or something, something that can't be traced back to you. And if you thought this wasn't stupid enough, he attached his portfolio below the original tweet. All these tweets have been deleted. Luckily, I got screenshots of all of them. Interestingly enough, though, the reaction to FL Studio doing this has been very mixed. Some people being upset and saying, uh, we should be allowed to crack this. Some people cheering them on. It even had BusyWork Speeds making a really weird video about the downfall of FL Studio, where he acted like FL Studio had done something horribly wrong and kind of said they were racist. So obviously TLDR, this guy's dead in a ditch somewhere. And if you're gonna pirate FL Studio, you should not share a link to it publicly because uh, they'll kill you. In a recent interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Pharrell of the Neptunes and NERD has revealed that he's no longer on speaking terms with his once production partner, Chad Hugo, which shouldn't be surprising because earlier this year, Pharrell allegedly tried to cut Chad out of the Neptunes trademark. In our next story, Plugin Alliance has released a new transient shaper. 
They say it is powered by ADAA technology. They're not gonna clarify what that is though. So. They claim they've added a new third dimension for transient shaping, the body stage. And you can tune the transients independently from attack and sustain with more control over your core, sound, and tail. Giving you, giving you more control over the weight of your sound. And to unlock new dimensions in audio production. Why am I alive? Okay guys, that's it for this episode of WNN, your source for the music and music production. If you enjoyed the video, press the like button. I would greatly appreciate it. Subscribe if you're new here. I post videos like this almost every single day, maybe every other day. If you want to support the channel, if you enjoyed this content, check out one of my other videos or my second channel or my Discord for a like-minded community. I'll see you guys next time.